Welcome to Building Wealthy Habits Podcast. Now, this features content and conversations with me, Randy Barkley, Jeremiah Lee, along with Laura Lee. On this podcast, we share financial advice from a team of certified financial planners, including a California licensed attorney and MBA professional with collective experience of over 40 years. This week, we are talking about spending and not just spending by yourself, but spending as a married couple. We have some guests on the an episode today. We're going to talk through how do you figure out how to spend and save with a partner? Who's the spender? Who's the saver? And at the end, we're going to kind of talk through what are some structures that can make sense for your life to make sure your spending matches your values. I hope you enjoy the episode. All right. So tell us about this incredible hot wing challenge. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's based on, um, there's a show called Hot Ones where uh, celebrities are interviewed while they eat uh, wings with various uh, degrees of spiciness. And so um, David's youngest brother, my brother-in-law, thought, hey, we could do that. And so you can order all the hot sauces. And so he cooked up a bunch of chicken wings and then had all the sauces laid out. And we just one by one went through and I would say, you know, the first half we were like, okay, like we got this. We're good. Yeah. And then we got to like number six and we were like, oh no. <laughs> it was that is... we said maybe the kids shouldn't be around for the. Yeah. Well, yeah. So there were kids around. So that was an added level of difficulty yeah. because. Uh... <laughs> Crying and profanity and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So like one through five though, is it like eat the hot wing, drink some water, we're good to go. Or was it like, cause yeah. there's like technique here, right? There, yeah. And it, it was so funny how you be, you know, you become like such a connoisseur, you know, it's like the first, it's like, oh, we really like the notes of vinegar and, and buffalo on like the first four, you know, because it's the, the heat hasn't really kicked in yet. And then, and then, yeah, by the time we're in like the, the second half, we're just like, <sighs> like <laughs> I need, no talking. I need, I need a minute. Just don't, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I mean, so we talked about dark and stormies earlier. That's that's where I started, and that seemed to help. A little bit. <laughs> there you go. Some people went the milk route. Some people went the the cocktail or beer. yeah, or the, or the cold beer. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how many is there total? Yeah. On the on the show, there's ten. We only did eight, but we did we did make it through to all eight. Um, but you know, we're we're saying it's like by the time you get to those really hot, you're not even tasting flavor anymore. Mm. It's just straight heat and we were like why did we do this who thought this why? was a good idea <laughs> <laughs> what do we get for this yeah like yeah. <laughs> yeah by the end of the night you were checking out okay so how quickly can we get to the last two all right mm. we, we were oh little... well that's true i yeah, did because right? i was like well wait a minute we're we're missing the like levels gotta, nine and ten no though and there was a part of me that's like well i just kind of want to know if I could, you know, right, I got to finish this race to, to yeah. say, to say that I did. Yeah, exactly. No. Exactly. I mean, the Olympics just ended. We're all sad. I think this was the next challenge. I agree. It was we, like... were, we were starved for competition. So exactly. we just, <laughs> we looked to, we looked to Buffalo wings for. I think that's to... where it's really going to separate us out too. Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. So I can't there... do the pole vault, but I can, I can, you know, <laughs> do a level six out of 10 spicy on Buffalo wings. <laughs> I love it. That's oh, my so word. Good. I love it. I love it. Okay. So for our listeners, we have two guests on today's podcast. We have David and Caitlin Carnes, our willing victims. I mean, our participants today. <laughs> and some of our listeners may recognize or know that name, Caitlin Carnes. She's quite famous here in our office. She is actually on the Tricord team. And David is her husband. And today we are talking all about what it means to be married and learn your partner's relationship with money. So we've got some funny stories. We've got some serious uh, anecdotes and stories too, but we all know that money in general can be a very sensitive topic. And all of us arrive at these types of conversations with some sort of baggage, bias, something in our background that has informed how we relate to money. And so many of us were raised in households where money was either never talked about 
or if it was, it was stressful, right? It was like a topic that you avoided. So it's one thing to have to deal with our own behavioral finance issues, right? As we get older, but it's a whole nother ball game when you have to learn how to do it with your life partner. And we realize there's some curve balls. So joining us today, Caitlin and David are going to come along with us on this ride. We're going to talk about how we discovered um, our spouse's money habits and how we, how we're doing now, how are we doing lately? <laughs> <laughs> so to get us started, I thought what would be fun is we, I sent all the participants and for our listeners, you can find there's a lot of variety out there, but you can find these online quizzes that assess whether or not you're generally speaking a saver or a spender. And so I thought this would just be kind of fun way to get our conversation started. So out of the four of us who actually took the quiz online, show of hands. Hey, 100%. All right, I love it. All right, and um, just to like, you know, hear from David and Caitlin, do you guys want to share first? And was it, and was it, oh, no, no, better. Can you guess what your partner was? Uh, so on the first one, I don't know what the score is out of. <laughs> that was a little tricky but i can jump to the third one which i did actually really like that was the five money personalities one yep um, and i'm only going to say guess this because i think we're very similar honestly um i i don't know it's it, this is less a true opposites attract than a like we, we kind of fill in some of the gaps but then sometimes have the same blind spots but i'm guessing like it's kind of to just jump the gun here that we're pretty similar on it so you've got the flyer spender risk taker saver and security seeker um, my guess is spender and security seeker for caitlin on those on that last one um mostly because that's where i came up so i'm just gonna spoil that that quiz right there but i think that just kind of point at least my perception of where we are so okay so security seeker and yeah, spender that's... Okay, drum roll, please. Caitlin, what were you? Well, and it would have been helpful if I had specifically taken that. Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we, I did send out multiple options. That's true. But um, based on the other two that I took, he's he's right on the money. It's, uh, you know, in the in the micro, um, you know, I would say that I'm probably a spender. But then when we zoom out a little bit, um, definitely security minded, looking toward the future, um, especially uh, when there's, you know, little ones that we have to make sure are fed and clothed and all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, before I even took any quizzes, uh, David, you know, same thing. I think we're very similar. He's a he's a spendy saver or a <laughs> saving spender. Okay, um, so good balance. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that you've changed since you've been married? Like, were your spending habits different before you got married? Yeah, I uh, think both be, well, at least I feel like I've become more conservative, a um, little bit more, like you said, we're caring for four people now and a dog, mm -hmm. you know, not just, you know, one in an apartment. Um, it definitely puts priorities into, yeah, helps a yeah. lot of things. Um, I like, I, I like. Yeah. I like how the dog got included there. I didn't mean to cut you off. That was great. Four people hey, that, and the dog. Don't forget. <laughs> senior dog food is not cheap. So <laughs> that's, that's um, it. Pounds of it. So yeah. It's, yeah. But. You know, when we, so we got married in 2011 and I remember kind of a feeling of um, invincibility almost, you know, mm -hmm. we were both gainfully employed out of college and uh, you know, we, we bought our first house uh, the first year that we were married and, we were like, wow, look at us go. We're, you know, this is great. And uh, that invincibility, uh, we, we quickly came to realize was uh, false. Uh, we, we are not invincible. No one is when it comes to uh, to the realities of finances. So, um, you know, a little a little bit of um, shock there uh, for a while, but um, it was good for us ultimately in the long run, because mm -hmm. now that we're kind of out of that starry-eyed honeymoon phase and and with with kids to support um i think we're a lot more realistic about uh where we are yeah. right that's so good i think laura and i it's interesting as you talk about that i think laura and i are i'd say we're more similar now 
um, than we were before. But uh, we have a you know a story we've come back to a few times of we were I don't know prior first year of marriage you know we had a house and we needed to get a new switchblade cover. We didn't or, have a house in our first year of marriage. Oh, you're right. We didn't have a house. It would have been yeah. A, a, let's. I just want our listeners to know we're being very honest. We were yeah, renters. We, we were not there. Yeah, we were. But renters. in a very expensive city, we lived in San Francisco. Yeah. Mm. So we we needed to get a switchblade cover, you know, just to go over a little light switch, a new one. So we yeah. go to I don't know Home Depot, Lowe's, one of those. And Which we had to drive 30 minutes to get to outside sure. of the city, yeah. but, you know, whatever. <laughs> so as we get there, we're both sitting next to each other, and there's the wall of switchblade covers, and there's probably, I don't know, 30 different options. We both stand there for a second, looking around, what color is it? You know, not really talking at all, just looking. And then uh, the fun part about this was it was almost the exact same moment. Yeah, as if we, we both... had rehearsed it. We yeah. both reach out. <laughs> we both reach out, and we grab one, and not the same one. We both grab one and pull it back, and we look at each other. And we say, what, what, what? And you look at, so the one I bought, I don't know what a, the actual price was, or the one I picked up was probably 15 cents. It's mm. the plastic switchblade cover that's 15 cents, you know, not, not much. Yeah. And the one that she picked up. I think it was like three fifty, close to $4. Yours was yeah. like 50 cents-ish. Mine was like almost $4. <laughs> Yeah. So we looked at each other and, and obviously I moment, picked the right one. Yeah, I mean, I also, yeah. <laughs> and we, we looked at each other and like, why, why did you pick that one? And, you know, so I, I said, well, it, it's, it does what we need. It, this is the minimum cost to get what we need. This is, this is a switchblade cover, not something to splurge on. And then her comment was saying, well, this one's more, it, it must be better. And it's only um, a few dollars. So there's a not a lot bucks. of risk. Let's buy the best one available. Yeah. And it was at that moment that we realized. <laughs> Laura, I think that sounds like great reasoning. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that encouragement. Well, here's the irony. I was raised by the financial planner. Mm. And I think if my dad were listening right now, he might cringe just a little, just a little bit uh, right. about right. my choices I, there. I Did you guys have similar aha moments when you were first married? <laughs> I don't know. If, I think the aha moment, like the wedding is always a, a big mm. item right mm. there. It's okay. We're putting how many thousands of dollars into this and how important really are flowers? Oh, they're very important. Okay. <laughs> how important really is the bar? Right. Yeah. And, and I think that it, it certainly was a, a shock to us. Um, we had already talked about, you know, kind of combining finances. We were a, you know, just kind of shared uh, bank accounts. Uh, family, it was never a, like a really question to us, but as part of that coming together, you get hit with that first big shock, um, buying the house and things like that. Um, it definitely, it, it forces you to have some conversations for sure. And some of yep. them you don't want to have. Um, but for us, I think our, our priorities certainly come out. Like you say, you, well, it's, it does the bare minimum we need. So why would we pay more for it versus, oh, this is a quality thing. And mm -hmm. I think what we've seen with us is maybe it's ego or selfishness or just autopilot. But for me, sometimes I'm like, well, we don't need to worry about the paint right now. That's that's not something that bothers me every day. Or I could take three years mm -hmm. to save a bunch of money on the backyard and try and do it myself because it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But I know that those things can bother Caitlin. And then on the other hand, I'm like, well, I've got to spend the extra $50 on this thing for climbing gear or a computer thing, whatever it is, something that I personally see the value in. I go, oh, of course I've got to buy the $3 one over the 15 cent one. Yeah. Uh, right. And I, I'm sure there's something just innately human to that about what we, what we see and what we miss. But, uh, but it is, funny you know clothes and things like that that uh know. you know where i go well i've had this shirt this was a free shirt you know it's, 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 it's a really good shirt um so looks good i would have never guessed what I, I should do is go buy a couple more and actually invest but i don't because i don't think about it, it it's just yeah. not right. something that that triggers me well it's right. a it, it's a question we ask our kids a lot too actually is is it important to you you know, mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of our decision making, I think, comes from. And uh, the 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 tricky part is when when it's important to one partner, but I don't necessarily see the importance in climbing gear. However, uh, I know that it is important to David, and if that you know helps uh, helps build his hobby, it's like okay, well, let's let's see where we can uh, you know uh, negotiate some some yes. climbing gear. I really like the comment. That's such wisdom. I think of of shared values, right, and understanding the other person's value. We, we had a, a moment earlier, uh, I don't know how many years ago this was in our marriage, but uh, we'd gone through a budget at the end of the year, just kind of you know tracking things as we're going. 
and I had a line item that was way bigger than I thought for fast food. It was Farmer Boys, and I was like, "That's that's not a real number. That's a." Typo. I thought you were going to say parking tickets, but oh, anyways, we'll get back. We'll get back to that story later. Another story. <laughs> so we went back and looked at, and sure enough, my old office was right across the street from Farmer Boys. Mm. And the days that I had forgotten to pack a lunch and I was hungry, it was probably you know one thirty, two p.m. I just ran across the street, got something. Probably wasn't good for my body, nor was it probably the best for our pocketbook. And the number, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's was, it was like $3,000 in the year. It was unreal. Mm. And I was like, this can't be real. And realized it was. And so I was like, okay, well, that's easy. I want a $3,000 raise. I'll just stop eating at Farmer Boys. So I'll just pack my lunch. Yep. But then we compare that to like, if we were to get out on a date night, you know, we have we have four kids. And so getting on a date night is a, is a wonderful moment. <laughs> hey, we have dinner slowly together. And you know, I'm, I'm less concerned about the bill there because it's a value, right? I, I don't value Farmer Boys, but I do value, you know, time with the dinner with Laura. So I, yeah. I really like your comment, just saying, hey, when you identify those pockets of value in your life, especially ones that are shared, mm-hmm. you know, hey, that's an easy one to put our resources to. But when you even say, hey, it's not a value to me, but it is a value to my kids or it is a value to my spouse. Yeah. Right. And maybe that makes the cut, right? Maybe that's still included. I mean, as part of the budget. let's all just talk about the black hole of spending, though. So as couples, when you purchase something on Amazon, you know, when that comes across my budgeting software, that's not pre-itemized. And so I think at the same aha moment when Jeremiah discovered Farmer Boys, we also discovered Amazon slash the black hole. We're like, well, you just buy things here and there. I wanted that new climbing gear. I need that new pair of running shoes. We need different kind of toothpaste. I don't know, whatever. Right? And then yeah. it's like going into Target for toothpaste. And then when you check out, you're like, man, I spent $527 on how that did that happen? toothpaste. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens. And that was our, that was another big aha moment for us. We're like, oh, Amazon. And so we actually had to go through, at that time we were using Mint. Doesn't exist anymore. Credit Karma bought it. But um, we were using Mint for our budget software. And so we'd have to go through and tease out because it was such a black hole for us. We're like, there's no way we're spending that much money on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and in, in the age now of everything being digital and not not having to physically hand over cash, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think it's something that Dave Ramsey talks about is, you know, um, you know, it feels so much different when you hand over a $5 bill than when you just, you know, scan your app for my $5 coffee. Yes. Okay. So I'm so glad you said that because just this summer, our kids age, age ranges are five to 11. And just this summer, we started exploring this idea of allowances Mm -hmm. and we, we went back and forth because there's a lot of different, I think green light is one fidelity, even lets you open like a youth investment account, but I think you have to be like 13. We did a lot of different research, but we ended up deciding to do the old school method of here's your cold, hard cash. Mm -hmm. And we took envelopes and talked about how to categorize. And so still every week we're like, shoot, we got to go by the bank. We got to get cash. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cause you don't, cause we're giving nice. them yeah. dollar bills and quarters and right. they're like, <laughs> you know, I think that was yeah. the biggest hurdle for us in, in getting started with allowance was how many times are we going to have to go get cash? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't, they did their chores, but we don't have the money to pay them. This is outrageous. <laughs> IOUs, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Bank mommy and daddy will pay you yeah, back. Don't I you know. worry. Yeah. Well, bank of mom and dad just, just keep paying out for them. And yeah, that, right. It's yeah. Pilot for them too. And mm. it's uh, going to that word. I'm thinking back about, uh, about our financial history. Go ahead. You know, trouble is in the very beginning even and feeling like we're in good shape now it's all gone to autopilot it's just kind of my my touchstone because we're we were not checkbook uh you know raised on balancing the checkbook every day um it just wasn't part of it i remember seeing my mom sitting down and every penny went into the checkbook and and knew where everything went we were the debit card generation and it was just real easy to you know the paycheck goes in and I spend out of it. And that initially was, well, you know, mortgage goes out of it, the bills go out of it, everything. And then you get to, you know, the 20th and go, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And start looking, oh, where's, hang on, we got a problem here. Just because yeah. we, don't, we don't think about it. And yeah. mm-hmm. one of the biggest things that has really helped us was creating, you know, using that autopilot feature of, of us to take, my, you know, when paychecks come in, um, I'm paid monthly just as part of my 
uh, how my work works. So most of that takes uh, and goes into the bills account. And mm -hmm. then between that and Caitlin's paychecks, and you know, we're trying to automatically portion it out into, okay, this is this account needs exactly this much every month or roughly this much every month. So it's going to get it. Mm -hmm. And we have the savings pulled out and retirement pulled out uh, as, as early as possible. So yep. that way what's in the checking account, the day-to-day -day account is not free. It's not extra, but it does have a lot less uh, impact. I like, I like that. I like that word. Go, okay, I should slow down maybe on the farmer boys today. You know, yeah, yeah. Because right. their their Southwest chicken salad is certainly a, a problem of mine too. <laughs> <laughs> They're farmer boys. It's uh, it's yeah. I kind of instead of it just being one bucket, is we now have multiple buckets, and that's really kind of been a game changer for us. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been huge, and yeah. and able to help focus uh, the money where it needs to be and feel like we're already taking care of our obligations. Um, and then that that automatic spending, those Amazon purchases feel a little less critical, but it also allows us to focus on them, focus on what's using up our available. Right, because yeah. you've already made the big decisions. I think this goes back to what Jeremiah is saying. A lot of times when we're just onboarding a new client and we ask them for like their budget or their spending plan, they kind of hand it to us like, like they're handing in their homework to their teacher, mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know what I got wrong here. You know, and we're like quick to say there's no sort of shame here. The only thing we want to do is try to identify where you're spending money to make sure that it lines up with your values. So if you have that similar aha, like Farmer Boys or the Amazon Black Hole, then let's make sure we steer those towards where your values are. So I love what you're saying about autopilot because you make a predetermined decision as a couple. This is how much goes into this. This is where we're going to allocate that paycheck to go here. And then you kind of set it and forget it. And then the difference that you have, okay, this is money that we can allocate towards fun things, luxury spending. The other comment I was going to make is failure by association. You know, I look back at our years of being married and there were seasons where like when we lived in San Francisco, we ate out a lot. That's how we met people. We were new in the city. We were what I lovingly call dinks, dual income, no kids, mm -hmm. right? It's a season of life. And then all of a sudden you get married and you start having kids and those dink friends, it's like, well, I can't just like go to Cancun this weekend. Like <laughs> it's not in the budget, you know, like it's not yeah. going to be okay. Um, Jeremiah was in law school and I was actually in some of my highest income earning years um, just so happened while he was in law school. Well, our friends, first of all, he didn't have a lot of time to go hang out and go out to eat. He was living on like top ramen and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And our friend, I was working really hard and our friend group was like starving students. So we, th we just tossed it all away in savings. And so we do say like, I bought our first house and he bought our second house <laughs> when I went back to school, right? It was his opportunity. And th those were seasons where I'm grateful for it. Um, you know, and then just to be kind of aware, like I'm not telling any of our listeners to change their friend groups because we need friends in our life, but just to be aware, you enter into these different seasons of life and you find yourself spending money just because of convenience or who you're associated with, et cetera, The circumstances. Et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can relate to that. Yeah. Even like they explained about the, the hot wings challenge, <clears throat> you know, that, that costs something, right? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a very reasonable, like, hey, this is a fun thing. Let's, let's yeah. do this. And I, I think I feel that as well of, of kind of where we are, you know, fast forwarding a little bit to where we are in life now. Like, I feel like we have regular conversations about our finances. We've mm -hmm. kind of, like some of you guys, it sounds like, you know, we've made those big choices. Hey, we want to be saving this much. We want to be investing this much. We want to, you know, we, we've made some of the big bucket choices. But then when it comes down to, you know, how we're living, like, I, I mean, we still ask, I don't know what, I don't think we have a set dollar threshold, but if either of us were going to spend something that was, I don't know, somewhere over a hundred bucks, like we would talk about it. Mm -hmm. And on part of that, that probably feels silly in the sense that, hey, we're grown adults, <laughs> we can spend our own money. But but to say, like, we've come, I think, a, a group approach to this, to say we made these big choices. Mm -hmm. And as life happens and we say, hey, we want to buy this thing, or I mean, Christmas presents is a big one that we sit down and kind of talk through, hey, this much for this person, this for this person, and kind of be very strategic in that. And um, it, it's a dynamic I think we've had to develop. And I think every married couple needs that either storming or, you know, when life kind of hits the fan, you know, some of that <laughs> to, to, to say, hey, 
we have a great potential to do some really great things with our finances. Let's really pay attention here and set this up. The, the structuring you talked about before, David, I, I really like that to say, hey, we have a set structure. This just automatically happens. So now instead of dealing with all of it each month, we're only dealing with you know, this much spending each month right, that yeah. we need to think about and talk about and deal with. We're not starting from square one every every month. Well, I feel like we could keep talking because we have a lot of material between the four of us. So we might have to do a part two where we dive into some of even the principles that we've taken away. But for our listeners, I hope this was a little bit uh, entertaining and maybe a little bit encouraging. That is hard for everyone, even those who were born in a household where their dad was a financial planner. Um, (laughs) So and I just want to give a special thank you to David and Caitlin for playing along. We love, love having you this week on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. That was a lot of fun. We have a few more things to let you know about before we go. Podcast reviews really help us to serve more people and get this information into the hands of the people who need it. Please leave us a review, even if it's not five stars. We welcome the feedback. And we invite you to let us know what topics you would like to hear more about or what would benefit the people in your life who you're closest to. We have more resources online. Uh, Those resources are designed to help you share this great information easily with people in your life. To access those resources, please visit tricordadvisors.com. Often we hear from clients that they wish they had talked to us sooner. If that's you, we'd be thrilled to see how financial planning can benefit your life. Email us at contact at tricordadvisors.com or simply click on the link in the show notes. This show was produced by Graham Gardner at Model FA. Find out more about how to create a podcast for your financial planning business by visiting modelfa.com. We love creating content that's useful, resourceful, and maybe even a little entertaining. We want to make this mega universe of financial topics and advice applicable and helpful to your life. Remember, at Tricord Advisors, we are your future's best ally.